CEO of a company, you can't afford to be a rabble rouser. You can't afford to be a rabble rouser. You must be educated. Now, let me tell you what happens now. When you're even a pastor, you get to a level, the kind of caliber of people you meet. When you ask, they say, what do you do? You say, I'm a man of God. You know what they will ask you? What were you doing before you became a pastor? They have asked me that severally. So, oh, pastor, good to you. Pastor, what did you study? They want to know your, le- your, 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 your discipline. By the time you now say, uh, they size you. It's okay, this one. Some days ago, a lady called me from London. She said she was referred to me. Guess what she said? She said, I went to Google your name and study you. I knew you were not a mediocre. That is why I called you. She said, I knew. When I started, she had an issue that has been eaten up for 17 years. And that issue, she can't sleep. When I spoke to her, not prophecy. When I spoke to her about technicalities of life, when she woke up, she said, for the first time, somebody could talk, not pray. Say, pastors have prayed. Somebody could talk to me about life. He said, I slept like a baby. But the part I, lo- I love, he said, I went to go and check and Google. I knew you were not a mediocre. See, it's not enough for somebody to have anointing. I can't communicate because the person is not knowledgeable enough to know what I'm going through. And there's something about the anointing. The anointing works on your capacity. Yes. Now, imagine a young man is a young man is in the prophetic. Come, sir. A young man is in the prophetic and he sees this man. There are, there are things against his life. He says, Oh, Rabba, shakata, kata, 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 kata. Oh, God, you buy salt. Salt. You mix it with oil. Then you know Atarudu, Atarudu. You grant it. Now, now. As far as he's concerned, he's, he's trying to work out something. All of those objects or whatever he's mentioning, he's picking them in the spirit based on his capacity. That's how God is relating with him. But another man comes, he looks you in the eyes. You take out this time to do this. You take out this time to do this. God comes to you. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance that which you have read. So if there's nothing there, there's nothing God will remind you of. So the Spirit of God works on your level of capacity. There are things I know if I tell this young man to do, it appears fetish. It appears occultic. I will not say that to him. But another man who is not experienced or exposed enough comes very raw. Like for example, this man is here now. The wife is standing. He's cheating on the wife. And the Lord tells me, an uneducated man will just release it like that, not knowing that he will break a home. But you go say, Me, I talk now, I go talk, <laughs> sir. I saw you cheating on your wife, madam. This man is a bad man, <laughs> he's prophesying, he's prophesying because the way the message is coming to him, raw. But knowledge helps you to filter it because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So when you are knowledgeable, the man now says, Sir, can I tell you something? Take off the mic, you talk to him in his ears, and tell the wife, Don't bother. Our guy is blessed. I'm giving him a message, a personal message. You move on. You have delivered the message, you have helped his life. <laughs> tell somebody, develop yourself. One more time. One more time. For the last time. Number what? The 10 mistake that most young men make is rebu- in, in their relationship is rebuking a lady in public. Never rebuke a lady where there are people publicly. If you do that, she doesn't see the rebuke or the correction, she sees the embarrassment. If you, some people can't hold themselves. Maybe the young. They, 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 okay, look at this. Look up. Look up. They go out. There's a young boy there, and the person they are dating just walked to the boy. He's throwing herself on the boy. How are you? Ah, I've missed you. Have this. You, you, are, you, are, you are dying inside. You are dying. <laughs> Ooh, but did they prepare you? How will you react now? He, he, the boy says, How are you? He now sit down by the boy. He came with you. Now sit down by the boy, and he's talking. It is wrong for you to just stand up. Say, What is this? Why are you embarrassed? No, you don't do that. You call if you can't hold yourself till after that <laughs> that scene. 
you walk to her, you call her to a corner. Are you following me? This thing you are doing is embarrassing me. Stop it. You get back. I'm not just come. What's this? Guy, guy, what's in the apple? <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Say, what, what, what's going on? No. At the end of the day, you'll be surprised that somebody. Now, what she did is wrong. Am I correct? She won't see the wrong. She will see the rebuke because women don't think with their brain, they think with their feeling. No, it's true. Women don't think with their brain, they think with their emotion. Men are logical, women are emotional. Come, come, Jimon. Come. I, I see this. Maybe this is a young man, this is a, maybe it's a girl or a, a lady. I'm a man. When a man says to a lady, Ah, this is your shirt, change it now. As far as the man is concerned, or as far as we all are concerned, he should change the cloth. Am I correct? But a lady goes back. So I'm smelling. It's, it's, so I'm smelling. So it means I, I don't know clothes now. So it means I don't know the right thing to wear. What's going on? She's been emotional. That's how they think. That's who they are. But men are change, change. Am I talking to somebody here? So you must get that point. Sit down. Get that point straight. And when you are rebuking somebody, and this leads me, leads me to the next one. Learn to use the right words. There are words that are very important as a man that you must know. The words for, that complement the day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening are very good. Uh, these are prime words that a man must know how to say. Whether you are older or you are younger, when you are talking to people, understand the greeting of the day. When you pick up the phone, good afternoon. That's the first thing, not? Uh -huh. Talk. It's courtesy. These are little things that depict either responsibility or irresponsibility. Words like thank you. Words like I'm sorry. Tell someone, use the right words. If you don't count your words, a lady will help you count it. Men that must use the right words. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. All right, let me go ahead. Being promiscuous. When you are promiscuous, you are, you know, you are sleeping around. Sexual promiscuity is a sign of destiny stupidity. Sexual promiscuity is a sign of destiny bankruptcy. When a man keeps withdrawing deposit, deposit without depositing money, very soon his account will go on red. When you keep going into immorality, doing today what you are supposed to do tomorrow, when you get to tomorrow, there will be nothing to do tomorrow because you did tomorrow, you did yesterday, all you would have done today. Are you following what I'm talking about? Sex is an act between two married couples. So if you, you are not married, you are doing it now, you are single. You are withdrawing from your destiny deposits. And when, you, when, when there is so much withdrawal without deposit, there will be bankruptcy. So you keep sleeping with a girl that you, you should sleep with tomorrow, you are doing that today. When you get to tomorrow, I'm telling you the truth. There will be nothing to do. The passion will be gone. The excitement will be gone. The vigor will be gone. It will be gone. The zest will be gone. That's if you still go ahead and even marry her. I can shock you that 70 percent of relationship that get sexual perversion or sexual involvement don't end up in marriage even if you end up in marriage it becomes a marital crisis am i blessing somebody am i blessing somebody another mistake people make young men make in their relationship is not proving they are partner before commitment. You must prove your partner before commitment. Don't just see somebody because you want to catch or kidnap or cage the person, you give her a ring. No, sir. The person must be proven. The character must look marriageable. She must earn it. 
you must know there's a lot of peace you derive you must know there's a lot of joy in your heart in first samuel chapter 17 when they came before when david came before saw with all the weapons and armors given to him david said i cannot use these because i have not proven them david said i can't use these weapons because i have not proven them only what has been proven can give proofs you must take them and that's the place of courtship the reason adam and eve ended up in crisis is because adam and eve had no courtship adam just woke up your oh, one woman was standing if they had courtship adam would have known that eve was a restless woman for say lord i'm not marrying her i told you yesterday that eve was a woman that cannot stay one place walking about adam would have seen that in courtship and that's why adam attacked god he says the wife you gave me god said eh. he said yes you gave me god's no problem from today either find it a wife go and find everybody go and find either find it a wife find it a good thing find by yourself <laughs> am i communicating because i don't give people wife anymore he says the wife you gave me this is my wife the wife you gave me that was an accusation on god so god now said i no more give people wife again i can only direct people to find wife glory to god prove them i've told people all the time when you can't cope don't hope when you cannot cope do not hope you can't cope today you are hoping for tomorrow no sir who you can't cope with today live today when you cannot cope don't don't what when you can't cope don't hope you are seeing somebody that is quarreled, there is fight, there, don't, don't, you cannot cope. There are issues, fighting is already, now, can I shock you? Most of those who are married, <laughs> those who are married, some of the crisis they have in their home now, they saw it in courtship. But there was this consciousness of, I will manage it, I will manage it. It's only in the church that that happens. That doesn't happen in the world. When a lady has a bad character, a young man says, I'm not, I'm not do, I'm not going. I know they, I'm not entering. But once somebody has a bad character in the church, we use prayer. Pastor said, don't worry, we'll be praying, she will change. No, change now. There are relationships I have broken in the name of the Lord. They were quarreling, they dragged themselves to my office and I had their two and I said, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break this relationship now. You, you, if I see both of you together again, quarrel, the lady will abuse, they abuse her, him, the young man also will abuse, you are not meant to be together. Do you know why some people cannot leave? Because sexual immorality is involved. The pastor, one of our pastors in this ministry wanted to get married to somebody and there were issues. And the pastor was so bold. He said, Papa, I brought her here. I said, Yes. I brought her again now. He brought her before for marriage. He said, No, I brought her again. I said, Why? I also brought her now to tell you I'm no more interested. So that's why I brought her. I said, Okay. I said, yeah, Have you slept with her? He said, For what? Ask her now. She's here. She's the Ask her. I've known her for nine months. Ask her. The lady said, Nothing like that. That did not, not even a hug. I saw the boy did like this. I said, shake my hand. <laughs> I told the guy, I said, sorry, there's nothing you can do. He said, Papa, help me beg him. He said, you, he saw the guy, she want me to talk? Sit down. When he started narrating, got to a point, I said, stop. I said, young girl, this is not your destiny. <laughs> Look for your destiny somewhere else. When he narrated the things, I said, you are not married? He's a pastor of a church. The girl was already challenging members who are close to pastors. Not married yet. Madam, I said, I should warn you, please. The way you are, you are a married woman, oh, respect yourself. The way you are hanging around pastor. Re married women, challenging them. That you should avoid pastor. So the young man said to me, we are not married. All the married women in church that are close to me, yeah, she has chased them. If I now marry her, she will bury them. Say, so I'm not interested. And I said to him, say yes, you can't cope. So long he touches his ministry, touches his destiny, you can't cope. But why, why did he have that confidence to bring her to my office? Because he knew 
that you maintain the stand you can you talk like that can you be able to look and say i'm not doing again and the lady will go to the altar and cry to god and the prayer will not touch you because you avoided that body no when you have eaten your cake you can't have it i wish i was talking please do your best control your manhood control yourself don't allow your erection to give you direction tell your neighbor don't allow your erection to give you direction one more time <laughs> am i blessing somebody Amen. Amen. Number what? 13? 14. 14, 13. Put any number. Just write anything there. Another mistake that most young men make is ma marrying a cook or a sex slave. Some young lady, why they, men, why they want to go ahead to marry ladies because she cooks well? Some mothers, because they have slept with her, they feel, oh, it was wonderful. They want to keep her permanently. Can I shock you? A, ta a time comes you are not hungry a time comes you do not want sex what will she be to you at that time what will she be to you See, I want to marry her because she cooks very well why would you even mess her up before marriage so when you go into all of that when you go into that kind of relationship in your life there will be problems there is bound to be problems because when the foundation is destroyed now the bible needs to say when the foundation is destroyed what shall the world do what shall the gentiles do the righteous is helpless when the foundation is faulty i'm talking about the righteous not the sinners you are young people see life is deep yesterday was my birthday spiritual birthday august 20th i gave my life to christ now 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 I've been around for a while and I can tell you I can tell you I can tell you nothing brings dignity like sanity nothing brings dignity like morality when you are morally sound morally sane your dignity is unparalleled but when you enter into a point where you lose moral dignity haba haba that's why i said every young man that wants to live long and that's my next point failure to have a blueprint for your life blueprint you must have a program you must have an agenda for your life you must have an agenda at this age between when i'm 20 and 30 this is what i want to achieve between i'm 30 and 40 between i'm 40 and 50 have an agenda so whenever you are seeing anything for example come for example this brother now is going to keep your um, keep your Bible. Stand here. Come. I send him now to go to that man who is wearing tie to go and shake his hand. Now, for example, that is destiny, and this is a lady. As he's walking, walk towards that. Walk. Yeah, raise your head up. Look here. Why? could he ignore the lady he knew he was going to shake are you following what i'm saying okay come when i say stand here and he stand there and there's no agenda that there's somebody in front he will fall into the trap of wanting to discuss okay sit down when a young man sees a lady he's already liking already chasing is because he has no ultimate blueprint that i have a destiny when he has a destiny he sees an immoral lady he knows that is not part of my program for my life so to hell with you i'm going somewhere that's the truth when i see men who have female peers pastors who have female PAs, female secretary, I sympathize with them. And I tell them, I said, is this your agenda? 
the, but the devil is very subtle you, you, you have nothing in mind you want to just help a, a, a daughter get a job but is that your agenda for your life is that your program for your destiny I don't need it my PA is a guy my secretary is a man my, I surround myself not because I don't believe in the ministry of women there is a woman to handle the ministry of women mama is there so I mean, let, let them relate with her now for the sake of your destiny nobody plans to fall nobody prepares to fall people fall because they are not prepared can I rephrase that nobody prepares to fall people fall because they are not prepared when there are certain that's why if you go to this church you attend this church and you listen to all my messages you can't fail in life you don't agree with me you can't because it's not just the bible i tell you reality of life i don't preach greek hebrew i can give you hebrew and greek meaning of something but that's where it stops i can connect it to something stops there but i teach you reality because when you walk out of the church you don't meet hebrew people or greek people what you meet are, are the realities of life i'm not just a pastor i'm a coach i tell you things that will that will help your life that's the truth you do you know there are people now who do not understand that parts part of hygiene when you're a young man who smokes you are dirty you're a dirty person if you smoke as a young man you are dirty because your breath stinks every smoker's breath stinks when you are alcoholic your breath stinks check most people who are chronic alcoholics at a young age they start going gray at a young age they start going gray your breath stinks you may not know you smell there are certain things you have knowledge of you just say no this habit is dead i'm not going to do it again i'm not going to do it again cancer you breathe cancer you breathe liver sclerosis you breathe all kinds of intestinal problems when you are a smoker when you are alcoholic when you have this knowledge there's this consciousness you have you say no i can't do this because i want to live long become that person don't live life oh because uh, you want to smoke because some young lady you are dating likes it see you can't please a woman no be yourself let me give you an illustration can i give you there was a story building they wrote husbands for sale <laughs> it was five story building and the husbands were in different categories of husband the first floor was just anyhow husband it can beat you it can kill you and a lady walked to that shop she said kai i can't buy a husband here she moved to second floor good husband he will take care of you she said mm, let me check number three she went to third floor good husband will take care of you he will pamper you he will spend money on you she said wow let me check number four number four good husband will pamper you take care of you show you to god introduce you to church take care of your family she said wow let me check number five number five this one is for women that nobody can please no man can please they should come to this floor any kind of man they see they collect she said i don't want now what did that tell you she was not satisfied with number one not satisfied with number two not satisfied with number three not she was still looking for number five until she got to a point nobody could please her in other words if you have seen number two number three number four what else do you want from a man again she said no let me keep checking the floor number what the 16th thing that men do is thinking money can buy love when you think money can buy love true love can be bought with money 
A woman's need may love material things. A woman's desire may love material things. But a woman's emotion, a woman's heart, a woman's system wants true love. True love. True love is staying with one person. True love does not go, go around. True love sticks. You can give money. You can do all that. There are young men who believe that with money they can get anybody they want. Sir! I'm sorry to disappoint you. There are women you cannot buy. There are people, if you have all the money in the world, you can't buy them. You can't buy them. Number, number, eh? number 17 is being abusive. When you are abusive, Let me shock you. The heights of masculine weakness is when you beat a lady. It's a sign that you are a weak man. Strong men don't beat lady to make them submissive. When you raise up your hand, you slap a lady, you are saying that you are not a man. Because a real man will not a real man is a calm man. He won't, he won't lift up his hand. So if you are a person who beats up young girls, you are not a man. You are an animal. In fact, you are less than an animal. Because animals do not beat their, their spouse. If a, a male dog does not beat a female dog, when a male dog sees a female dog, he might sleep with her. The female dog can even back on the male dog, bite the male dog. You see the male dog avoiding that. Animals don't beat their spouse animals don't be their spouse then you as a man you are beating somebody you want to marry that shows you are what less than an animal do you know when parents flog children and all let me shock you i'm a parent i can tell you it is more difficult to train children and make them submissive without cane that makes you a super father that your kids are growing up with the fear of God and you have not lifted up a cane. It makes you a super father. If you are a young man who is already beating up girls, it means you kill your children. You kill them. But when you are able as a man, I have never lifted my hands on my own. Never. Either directly or indirectly. Even threatening to. You know, there's way you can... Never 17 years of knowing her. Never. It has never happened. It has never happened. Because it shows what, your, your ability to contain when you are angry. A young man, the father said to him, My son, the boy was growing up. He had a bad temper. He said, Do you know what to do when you are angry? He said, No, that he said, punch the wall. Punch the wall. So when the boy is angry. Him. Once, when he's angry, him. after a while, when he remembers the pain of punching the wall, he controls the anger. The father says, If you are angry, punch the wall. <clears throat> he was growing up, he got to a point, his hands were peeled, so he started minimizing the anger. He now called his father after two years, he said, Daddy, you deceived me. You said, If I'm angry, I should punch the wall. The father said, Yes. When you remember the pain of anger, you will control anger. When you see a young man beats up, <laughs> he beats up a girl. Say what? Say, I don't know. I can't hold myself. It's a lie. You can. You are angry. Say, she did what made me angry. That's why I beat her. I lost control. You didn't lose control because if you lose control with that anger, you'd have gone to Todd Milan Bridge and jump then I know you lose control. With that anger, say, I'm angry. I've lost control. You enter a barrack. Soldiers, you are mad. Yes, you have lost control. Or you just get angry. You are angry. You just pack your car. Come out at a checkpoint. Slap the first policeman at the vex. Slap the second policeman at the vex. That's anger. Not, be <laughs> Not beating up a lady. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, so you mean that even if you are angry, you see a soldier, you can control it? Can you? No, if you are angry and vibrating, you can see an army man, you can hold yourself. 
why can't you hold yourself when you are angry at that girl because you believe you can touch her and nothing will happen a young man said to me says he beat up his wife i said what he said i can't hold myself i can't hold myself and i said to him i said i have i have some policemen downstairs go down slap two come up my security men are just following me they are christian they are looking for how to walk they are looking for how to, to test their gun so just come slap one slap two i know either he come up on a wheelchair or stretcher i'm telling you because after that slap they will have to arrange him for jehovah the doctor <laughs> Because the beating of his life that he will get. Or join with my squad boys. You know my squad boys, they are, they are John the Baptist. Violent take it by force. Just meet them. Just say, I want to come, come, come here. Woy, woy. <laughs> they will do fire nines on your head. You can't control yourself. So why can't you now control yourself when you are angry? Kill that habit, that fist. The Bible says, believer must not strike. Kill that that clenching your fist to hit somebody, losing your bet to no, it shows weakness. Real boys don't beat girls. Tell your neighbor, real boys don't beat girls. Number what? Number a thin mistake that young men make is looking for a perfect girl. looking for a perfect girl no lady is perfect there can be feminine excess, excesses that you help them correct by, by talking to them but there is no one that is perfect the one that you think you are admiring now if you know the baggage not baggage, the garbage that she's carrying oh this one has done something you beat her, I saw something in the life of Adam Adam fell. Who made Adam fall? Who? Eve. Adam fell. Adam left the garden with his wife. He didn't beat her. Have you noticed he didn't accuse her? Why they were going? He didn't make statement. Check chapter 2. He said, and Adam knew his wife. Uh -uh. After you make me lose garden, I will still know you. For what now? He lost the garden. He lost everything. But that was a man. He knew the excesses and he controlled it. He still went ahead, knew her, went into her, and they had a child. So please, you must understand that there is nobody who is perfect. Even in marriage, even in marriage, number what? Number 19, mistake that young men make is thinking that when you make a lady feel bad, you can change her. You talk to her, you see all kinds of things, make her feel bad, you think you can change her. Do your best to make everyone around you happy. Oh, you won't talk to somebody for one month. You think that when you do that, the person will feel pain and now change. No, it doesn't work that way. When you keep somebody in a lonely spot for a while, you expose the person to the devil. Then number 20, mistake that most boys make is not knowing the definition of a real man. When you do not know the definition of a real man, you make mistakes. And I'm going to tell you a few things about a real man. A real man is a person of excellence. Excellence is not a mediocre. is excellence. A real man is an investor. He invest time he can spend time invest his energy invest money in business invest time in academics invest time in his choosing career invest time in his profession a real boy is an investor a real boy loves god if i were a lady a young girl and i were to marry a man I will check his level of love for God. How is he crazy about the things of God? Because a man who loves God will love you well. A man who loves God will not want to hurt you. A real man loves God. A real man talks less. Talks less. 
Kola si prashadaka. Monti alase. Now look up. Talking is a woman's product. Listen to me. If you read Genesis, you discover serpent. The devil spoke 14 words. Eve spoke 42. Hello? Satan spoke 14. Eve spoke how many? 42. And I've told us before that there's a component in a woman that can make her release 5,000 words in one day, medically. And there's a component in a man that can make him release 1,005 in a day. That is why when you don't allow a woman to talk, she will carry over some of the words to the next day. You do, she released only 1,000. You say, shut up. She carried to the next day 4,000 plus the initial five, become nine. You don't allow her to talk. She carry over 1,000 to the initial day. The day she's ready to talk, you say, you are nagging me. It's not nag, it's carry over. She has been carrying over. Wahala. Wahala. A real man is firm. F I R O M. Femme. He has a mind of his own. The mother doesn't tell him who to marry. The mother can only suggest what she should, should look out for. Your mother cannot say, Don't marry that girl. No. Your, a good mother should advise you, My son, look at this girl's character. Look at her attitude. Consider. Reconsider your decision. Not give you other. Don't marry this. Don't marry that. No. A real man is firm. A young man came to me, very young. He's about 47. He said the parents say should not marry a girl. That please, what should he do? I said, You are confused. At 47, three years' time, you'll be 50. As if you are not careful, I told you in this church, when a young man marries at a young lady rather marries at 50, and the man is 60, she's not going to have in-laws, she will have outlaws. Because the husband's family members are on their way out. They are old, going to the grave. And a young man who is like 50 and still single is not a bachelor, it's a man chiller. So I look at him, I say, go back. Tell me what their, 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 their issues are. The discrepancies they have is that the young girl does not, the mother says doesn't kneel down to greet her. I say, that's petty. Does she greet her? So I say, yes, she respects her. Number two, what do they say? He said the other time they told her to come to the house to do some chores, she came late. I said, that's senseless. Number three, what happened? He said they don't like their church, the church they are going. That's what the church he mentioned. It was a church, I know it's a good church. I said, at those, he said nothing else. Every other thing is good. I said, do you love her? I said, I said, go ahead. But please don't do it stubbornly. Sit your parents down and tell them the reason why you are going ahead. Firm. Anything you want to do, you have to call your mother. You are not a man. Firm. When you are firm, you are not pushed around. As a matter of fact, your parents may be smiling when they manipulate you. But deep down, a parent loves you when you are firm. My father would tell me, say, I know you are stubborn. I know you are stubborn. I said, okay. Because there are things you tell me, oh, sir, sorry, sir, can you explain this thing well? I saw a great man of God in this country. There was something, we were sitting down somewhere, there was something in a lounge at the airport. Great man of God. There was something he said, I didn't agree with. So I made sure everybody left. And I said, sir, I said, Papa, that thing, I don't agree. With. He said, bring the Bible. I brought the Bible. When you quote this part, I quote this part. I wasn't quoting to confront him. I wanted more understanding. When he quote, I quote. When he quote, I quote. When he quote, I now quoted the part. He said, Aye! You win. I said, Sir, we're not arguing. No, it's not debate. You win. No, you are the father here. I said, I just needed that, that thing. When you said it, mm -mm. have you not seen people do sit down in the midst of a discussion? Everybody's contributing. When he got to their turn, like the last speaker said, Say your own. I agree. That thing you said. My time is up. Thank you. If you have a question, take your seat one minute before we pray. If you have a question, we'll give you permission to ask it. Let somebody get a microphone. If you, we can handle written questions. We can handle direct questions. If you have a question based on what I've shared, you want to talk to us about it, you can write it and just raise it up and somebody will, um, you raise your hand, somebody will attend. But if you have a direct question you want to ask me, you can put up your hand and they will pass the microphone to you.
please it should not be a sarcastic question it should be a question that's in line with what i've thought all right i will only take 10 direct questions 10 direct questions maximum but the rest will be written so you are number one no no that one there's number one you are number one wait let me get numbers you are number two you are number three you are number four the guy there you're number five number six you number seven you number eight that man number ten number one all that written questions you can write it and pass it to them praise god go ahead and ask praise god and uh, my question goes this way um if you are engaged with a girl and the girl is positive that is responding positively then the problem is the parent not the lady itself what are you going to do because the girl is responding positively that the Maybe parents are not in support the parent is not in support but you have prayed and the girl have prayed and two of you discover that the hand of god is in the marriage what are you going to do i said what prayer cannot do what we do it more prayer if you have prayed and it appears there's a mountain both of you have got a confirmation from the lord you go continue in prayers don't do anything because if it's a man is different from a woman the way a man will respond to his parents a girl cannot respond to her parents like that i don't know if you understand what i'm saying no they are both different if it's a man i can know what to tell you but if it's a girl you have to make sure you pray the bible says the heart of the king is in the palm of the lord but what you are praying one thing that facilitates answers to prayer is when you are praying on scriptures when you are praying on scriptures maximize stand on scriptures in the past prayer so if you continue praying there'll be an answer number two is the next person by him When your parents see fault in your fiancé, you try to convince them several times that still do not agree with you. And you are running out of age. Maybe you are 50-something. So please, what can you do in that case? Why did you wait till you 50-something? Uh, you have been trying to convince them since when you are 30. And it has come to 50-something. You have been trying to convince them for 20 years and they refuse leave the girl i advise you leave her if 20 years a girl the girl can still wait for you 20 years an attitude has not changed 20 years parents are still standing please leave something is wrong somewhere am i talking to somebody here huh? yes sir but i don't think there's any girl that will wait for you for 20 years i don't think so if you're like i said the same thing i will say that i said to the young man but the brother's one is different as a young man you've got to see a girl cannot sit the father and the mother down so let me tell you the reason why i feel i should marry this young man it's an insult but a boy can am i talking a boy can say that this is the reason why i feel would you prefer that i do this or do that no allow me to do this pray for me if you notice anything speak words over my life you can only call your parents for such meeting when you know you have had God. You have gotten confirmations. You can now say, see the reason why I think I should go ahead. But before you go and meet them, make sure you are loaded, groomed, grounded in prayers. And you go and meet them and God will touch their heart. Yeah, number three. Praise the Lord. I, my question goes like this. Before I got admission into school, I made a request to God. And that request was a fixed deposit account for approval of that admission. Then an admission for that year and a woman to get married to maybe two years before my graduation. So along the line, during my one year IT after my ND, that same year the admission came, the fixed deposit came. After my ND, I met a lady and everything was going on perfectly well. Sometimes, because then I was in Port Harcourt, she is in Nasarawa, but she's an Igbo lady. So along the line, wake up at night, calls and pray, everything was okay. Then later after some months, she said, when I was in HND, 
going towards HND2. She said the mom said she should quit the relationship. I was a kind of, what's the problem? She said, the mom said, since I'm not an evil boy, that we should forget about it. So we tried and tried to see how we can patch the relationship up. But the mom took her to a church one day, which she said, the pastor said, if the relationship doesn't end, then there'll be breakage between the two families. Though I'm trying to understand this, but it's as if I can. So, Daddy, I want you to throw more light on this question because I'm a bit confused in this. What aspect. do I throw more light on? What the pastor said, or the Igbo lady, the, the Igbo issue the mother said, or you met her in Portacot, or she's an Igbo girl, she's in Nasarawa, <laughs> or, fix, or fixed deposit, or HND. What you have said so many things. No, is it the fixed deposit that you talk about? No, look, I'll be happy to talk about that one. Is, is it? Is it? Is it? Um, um, Portacot or Nasarawa? Daddy, actually, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. This is a hard truth. Marriage is not a do or die. If it's not working, leave it. You can only do that before marriage. Because once you enter, whether it's working or not working, you stay. But before you enter, if it's not working, leave it. A young man sent me an SMS. Part of, I get this SMS all the time from young people, young boys. They say, I've spoken to this lady and I don't want to live a life of sin. I feel that she can be my wife. I spoke to her. She has not answered me. She's avoiding me. I said, then leave her. Leave her. Don't make yourself a nuisance. Leave her. It might be painful because you love her. Leave her. Are you planning to become Igbo? Answer me. No. Relax. Let me say something to you. If something is meant to be, even if person goes, it will come back. If it's not meant to be, you will die before the time somebody will marry. Like I said, on your barrier, another man will follow her there. So do not kill yourself. Leave her. You, you cannot, you know, some of you have turned your fiancé's parents into strong men and strong women. Because your fa your, the person you are dating, the father refused you to marry the girl, you now call him strong man. Your prospective father-in-law is now strong man. The strong man that says, I cannot marry Angela. The strong man. The father is now a strong man. Please, leave her. Let the relationship rest. Alright? God bless you, my brother. Do? Sorry. Number four. Number four. Number four. Are you, yeah, here, yeah, here. Yeah. Osha Sakapa. Le Koto Soprata. Papa, sir. I'm from Epoma. I'm Rosalie University, home of Chris Epoma. There was a girl I met in the church. So along the line, we were friends. And uh, most often, I help her a lot. I help her a lot, financially, otherwise. But there was. And you're a student. Yes, sir. Help her. <laughs> Go, don't worry. That was a joke. That was a joke. Go ahead. There was nothing attached. So it got to a time she was not like, "What are you after? What are you after? What are you after?" And I let her know that there is nothing I am after. She are you serious? Said, yeah. There was nothing you after. Yeah, you were just helping her. <laughs> wow. You are nice, though. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. So she now said, ah, you, cannot be, you cannot be having nothing and you are helping like that. And I said, well, I don't know why I'm doing this. Nothing. So it got to a time she pushed me to the wall anyway. And I told her nothing. So because of that, she now caused it now caused quarrel between both of us. That we are not even far apart. So I never even stayed, but I stayed on my own. Well, so after the quarrel, we tried to resolve everything, and there was still nothing. So she stick boys down to me, coming down to me, and telling me I should give her, the, I should give her, I should, and me now I'm even tired because I don't want to continue quarreling any longer. What should I do? I don't understand. 
What you should do? She wait, hold on. Wait. Wait. She's now quarreling that you should now you she still ask you for things. Yes. And you give her. Yes, sir. Now she's still asking you what do you have in mind? Yes, sir. What do you have in mind? Nothing, sir. Eh, hey, nothing now. Please, brother, stop giving her. Stop giving her things. The truth, like I said to you, we live in a world, praise the Lord, let's calm down. We live in a world, if I give something now to a brother, and he goes, I say, ah, Papa gave me 20,000. That person, wow, God has favored you. When you give a lady that money, she goes back to that lady. Only those who are born again, we say, God has favored you. Some others will ask you, hmm, hmm. That's how they think with their emotion. Are you following me, my brother? When she asks you for things next time, since you are giving her, she's not satisfied with what you are giving her. She's looking for something else. Stop giving her. When she comes next time, tell her you don't have or you can't assist her. You understand? Me? Because you, are, you are keep assisting her. You are raising her hopes. And you see there's nothing in your mind. This is your eye I'm looking at. <laughs> ah, Okay. I believe you. I believe you. Number five. Praise God. Papa, I want to know if one goes to God in Talk loud. I want to know if one goes to God in prayer concerning whom to marry. Like, would God give the person, telling the person their names and everything about the person you want to marry, even someone you've not seen before? It's possible. Don't, it's possible. God can, but is not a regular or a an approved kingdom pattern god can god can give you name god can tell you where it's very possible but do not wait or do not say if i do not hear the name of a lady the address the phone number the blood group the street i'm not going ahead because the devil will impersonate and speak to you god directs anyhow it might be through somebody you meet your wife it might be on a journey. It might be anything. Just say, Lord, direct me. Don't be waiting for address or phone number. Lord, direct me to who to marry. That's the best prayer you can pray. Not give me name. Give me for no. Father, direct me on who to marry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Number six. Are you sure? Okay. Papa, sir. I'm, I'm from Abo, but I school in Tansan University on the um, sir, before I get my admission, when I become a born again, I took a vow to myself after listening to your tips that um, I'm not going to go into a relationship with anybody onto a particular age or stage in life. So, but the school where I found myself is as if they see it as every born again, they see dating as a normal thing that if you go into a relationship, so long you're not having sex, this is that it doesn't matter. So, I find myself close to a sister in school, but I haven't opened up to the person. And some Christian brothers and sisters came up to me with the aim of pushing me into opening up to the lady. I want to know if there's a particular age that a Christian should go into a relationship, if there's any particular age time they start, they should go into it. Praise the Lord. If you have been in our courtship teaching, I have handled the age factor. Am I correct? And one of the things I said about age is that age is number. There can be a 50 year old boy. Let me tell you. Do you know what maturity is? Maturity is ability to control your desire. You see somebody say this one, I won't do it. And you don't do it. Many of you have many times said, oh, I won't do this and you do it. Am I correct? That's to show you are not matured enough to take a decision. I won't do this, I will do it. But when you get to that point, you know you have control over your desires control over your emotions it means you are now matured and it's at that stage there is no particular age to marry but there is a stage to marry you follow what i'm saying there's no particular age somebody can be 40 and i'll tell him don't think of marriage he's aggressive he's as anger he has temper i say please don't marry but you may say he's aging but somebody who is angry, he knows he has got to that point that in the past, he used to be angry and destroy things. But now if he's angry, he's calm. He's at a stage of his life when somebody can come in. Are you following what I'm talking about? At this point of your life, can you control your desires? I will not even allow you now. 
enter relationship because the fact that you are feeling the pressure of the Christian brethren it means that you are not matured Christian brother are putting you under pressure to talk to the lady so don't go ahead the sign that you are matured is that no matter the pressure tell us to come I have a mind of my own when I want to do this I will do it leave me so if you cannot handle that pressure not now wait uh, sir hello papa sir we are getting messages from people watching us all over the world sir and one of the messages papa i'm Hold in on. south i'm from south africa i'm an assistant pastor i was dating my pastor's daughter and the pastor knew so uh, now discover she's not the one you I'm get mine though <laughs> go ahead what do i do what do you what he now discovered she's not the right person she's about to date no she is so <laughs> pastor's daughter care she is the right person <laughs> you are not afraid i cannot i cannot um there are certain things you should fear oh. there are some things you should see and fear if the father calls you <laughs> you now date my daughter then you now say it's not the will of god eh you will be the will of of God last. <laughs> Let me say this: as a young man, he has to. Find, what does it mean? Is not the one. I cannot come in there. If sex is involved, then he has no choice. He has to go ahead. That's the truth. In the Bible, the Bible makes us clear in the Old Testament that when you have gotten involved sexually with a lady, you cannot put her away. That's number one. Number two, he has to go and talk to the father. I'll give you this condition. If he wants to leave her, go and talk to the father. Tell the father everything you have done with the daughter. Don't hide anyone. After you finish, whatever the father tells you, send a text to this number. I will tell you what to do from there. But for now, go and talk to the father. Tell the father everything. You cannot walk out because there's an anointing upon the man's head. When the Bible says, touch not my anointed, he included, he included the anointed daughter. The, the anointed <laughs> <laughs> yes question this one is from zambia is it right for believers who are engaged to be involved in hugging or kissing no 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 i told you do not kiss do not hug because kissing is a prelude to romance romance is a prelude to sex if you don't want to do degree do not do prelim This other one said, Papa, I have a fiancé, and due to immorality, I have a child with her. And now, I have the call of God on me, and my church is asking me to marry her. What do I do? Marry her. Let me tell you something. Um, there are certain things when I, I will say them to you, you don't look at that about life. There are certain stigma that are not good for a man of God. Certain stain. That a man of God has a child, a different person, married, different person. If she is a believer, because for the church to say marry her, are you seeing the clause? If you just had a child, the girl is in the world. No, 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 no. But for the church to say marry her, not there are churches. Once you have something like that, it's already a stain. For them to say marry her, they have seen qualities of a wife in her. They have seen attributes of a mother in her. Go ahead, marry her. Come, you're going. Hold on, Nicholas. Hold on, hold on. Let's take some. Screw out some questions. Let's take like three. Then we'll come back. Okay, sir. So, Thank are you. you through? You have another question? Sit down. Ask the Holy Spirit that one. We answer it for you. Which other? What number are we now? Number seven. Where's number seven? Here. Yeah, okay. You are smiling. You look like question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you papa for this opportunity yeah. um the reason why i'm asking this question is uh for me not to make the same mistake my father made which is the second question i'm gonna ask after this question and the question goes like this uh, how do i know because when i go out there i meet different ladies of different calibers talk with them chat with them but how do i know that a particular lady is the right lady for me to get married to ah you are taking me back 
to old. All right. When you when we close, go to the bookshop. Get understanding singlehood. Maximizing singlehood. How singles mingle, fall in love, and not into trouble. Get those book. You will not only know the will of God, you will understand everything. I've thought about them here before. Several or get my teachings on, on singlehood. Knowing the will of God is very easy. There's nobody that bears the title will of God on the forehead. I've, I thought how you can know the will of God. All right. Okay, Papa, uh, the second question. Uh, uh, like yesterday, uh, when you were teaching, you made a comment about polygamy. And uh, my father married uh, four wives. Only. <laughs> 